fitness and motivation go together like peanut butter and jelly. If you have any sort of fitness goals, you know that fitness and motivation go hand in hand. Maybe you've felt motivated in the past and somehow lost touch with it. And you're wondering where the hell did it go? Maybe you're just trying to find that initial spark to get back to working out again, or maybe you've been in a bit of a sweet spot with your motivation and wondering, how are you able to keep this going? What's the, what's the magic? What's the secret sauce on today's podcast? We're diving into a really fascinating topic of intrinsic and extrinsic motivators, specifically when it comes to fitness, no matter what kind of athlete you are, whether it's recreational through competitive understanding, these motivational factors can make a huge difference in your entire fitness journey and your long-term results. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for being with me today. On this episode, we are diving into the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and specifically how you can apply these concepts to better understanding your own fitness goals. We know that at midlife, so if you're 40 and over, there are some really interesting challenges that may come your way, but also some great opportunities for redefining your fitness goals and looking at this in some new and interesting ways. Now, if you haven't heard the previous two episodes in this series, make sure you go back and do that. We have already talked about the importance of a growth mindset over a fixed mindset and also looked at all or nothing thinking and how that can really get in your way as you are moving forward with your fitness goals. So go check those out as well. And of course, as I said in previous episodes, I am a sports nutritionist and strength coach. I'm not a mental health professional, but I often do work with students and clients who are looking to form new outcomes from their strength training, from their nutrition behaviors and mindset inevitably comes up. So it is an important part of creating new outcomes in the here and now and in the future. Now, we also need to understand that today we're just scratching the surface with this concept of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. There are people who study these concepts for their entire professional careers. And so today we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg, if you will, and understanding that underneath these concepts, there are so many other things that we are not going to go into, but really just giving you a bit of a taster. So let's start with the question, what is extrinsic and intrinsic motivation? And first and foremost, what is motivation in general? Motivation is really the, the factor or factors that cause us to act, to take action and to strive toward the goals that we have, including the goals that we have that are related to health and well-being. And of course, our fitness behaviors, our nutrition behaviors, how we eat, how we move our bodies in a simple term is related to those ideas of health and well-being. So let's now look at the idea of intrinsic and extrinsic. You may have heard these before, but keep an open mind because we're actually going to show you today how it's not exactly a binary, which is what a lot of people think. It's just one or the other. We're going to get a little bit more nuanced. So in a nutshell, what are extrinsic motivators? They are usually focused on and related to or concerned with others and, or hitting some kind of social norms. They're often driven by external factors like praise, rewards, recognition, or even social pressure. So very externally focused outside of yourself. So think extrinsic, external. On the other hand, we have intrinsic motivators, which are more inwardly focused and relating to the things that you may find personally deeply valuable. You may find them fulfilling or inherently satisfying. So they are often driven by personal interest, curiosity, and a sense of accomplishment. So when you think intrinsic, think internal. So a lot of times when these concepts are presented in the pop culture, they're presented as a binary of this or that. You're either driven by extrinsic or intrinsic, and that's really a simplification. In reality, the going theory that surrounds extrinsic and intrinsic motivation presents it as a spectrum, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. 
Another thing that people think about extrinsic motivation is that it's somehow the bad kind of motivation and that intrinsic is inherently some kind of good motivation. Again, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. And we're going to talk about in this episode, how you can start to see these different kinds of motivators. Before we go a little bit deeper into these two kinds of motivators, where did these ideas come from? <laughs> so again, I think in terms of understanding mindset, we oftentimes think of like pop culture, what's just out there in the world. We think about quizzes that we do on social media and these sorts of things, but this concept of intrinsic and extrinsic motivators and all of the different shades in between, and we'll talk about that spectrum here in a moment, really comes from the work of Desi and Ryan. So these are two psychologists. And in 1985, they published a book together called Intrinsic Motivation and Self-Determination in Human Behavior. And really what came from this is the idea of self-determination theory. So what they were looking at is essentially what are the best ways to motivate people to perform tasks? And in the past, before their work, the going idea, the most predominant idea is that the best way to get people to take action is to reward them. So you may have heard sort of that idea of reward versus punishment. And they came along and independently had been doing work um, without each other and then came together and based on the work that they had been doing independently, came together and formed this idea of self-determination theory. So self-determination theory is really founded on the idea of three things that humans have have basic needs. And those basic needs in terms of change and motivation are the following. Number one, autonomy and feeling like you have a choice or a stake or a say in what happens. Number two, competence, which is this idea that you are capable. And sometimes people may call that also self-efficacy. So the idea that you are capable of making change. And thirdly, relatedness, which is really your connection to others and um, belonging, right? So if these three things are in place, their idea here with self-determination theory is that it can help us thrive when it comes to goals and high quality types of motivation. So that's really the foundation of this idea of extrinsic and intrinsic motivators and how you can leverage them in fitness. So let's take a deeper look here now at some of the things that people think or perceive about extrinsic and intrinsic, and then some of the more nuance that falls here. So what are some of the misunderstandings or ideas that people have about extrinsic and intrinsic motivation that may not be totally accurate? So first and foremost, people think that extrinsic and intrinsic motivation occur on a binary. It's either one way or the other. And in reality, we have a spectrum here. So there are different shades, if you will, um, different progressions of shifting from extrinsic to intrinsic motivation. So at one side of this spectrum is actually a motivation. A motivation is the lack of of motivation. <laughs> Lacking motivation is a motivation. So then we have extrinsic motivation, which is really, again, motivated by things that are external to yourself. We also then have a few different shades of extrinsic motivation that get closer and closer to be more, be more intrinsically shaded, if you will. So we have extrinsic motivation that can also be tied to things like your identity and your personal values right? So we're starting to shift a little bit more towards intrinsic. And then finally, the idea of intrinsic motivation. So these two things are, are not exactly on a binary. It's more subtle than that. The other thing that people often think about these two types of motivation, extrinsic versus intrinsic, right? Putting them on a binary. And this is why we talked about all or nothing thinking last week, putting them on in a binary oftentimes leads to people thinking, Extrinsic motivation is bad and intrinsic motivation is good. The reality, again, is that it's more likely that if you come in with extrinsic motivation to participate in some kind of health related goal, whether that's fitness, you're trying to improve your nutrition, et cetera, that extrinsic motivators can really help a person get started toward behavior change. But this is the but for the long term, it's also important to develop a sense of intrinsic 
motivation as well. So again, it's not saying that, you know, if you're extrinsically motivated, that this is a bad thing. It's just saying that for better long-term results, it's important to shift and challenge yourself to also identify with intrinsic, inherent, internal reasons why you enjoy or you value these things that you're participating in. So for example, many people start their fitness journeys with, again, extrinsic motivation. Maybe it's a desire to look good for a wedding that you're going to, or your reunion. This happens to a lot of people in their forties and fifties. They're like, oh, I'm going to a class reunion. I want to look good to impress other people. And so uh, that's one example. Another example is maybe you want to enter into a competition or you want to do a race, or you're going to challenge yourself in terms of your fitness. So these are usually externally related factors, and they can provide that sort of initial spark oftentimes of getting started of like, oh, I'm so motivated to, to make this goal happen, but they may not be sustainable for the long term. You may end up finding that only having an extrinsic reason may start to ring kind of hollow after a while, because you're really, again, motivated off of things that are outside of yourself. Intrinsic motivation, on the other hand, is like that inner fire, those embers of motivation that continue to, to burn right inside of us to propel us and push us forward. Even when those external rewards fade away and may not be present or they're less exciting, right? So it's about finding that joy, fulfillment, that satisfaction in the process of engaging in things like fitness and discovering things that truly you enjoy that resonate with you and setting goals that are aligned to your identity, to your values, or for the, again, intrinsic pleasure of doing them. So that's a little bit about sort of the, the difference between intrinsic and, and extrinsic and some of the things that people oftentimes get a little bit incorrect. So now let's look at some common examples of extrinsic motivators that often show up in fitness and nutrition. And I'm going to give you some examples of things that I commonly hear or have seen out in the world. And I want you, as you're listening to this list, to challenge yourself to also think about, hmm, where have where have I seen this? Where has this happened to me? Where have I maybe done this in the past? What do I know about my own growth and see what comes up? So here are some examples of more extrinsically motivated things. Some of these you could potentially argue could nudge toward those types of extrinsic motivation that lean more toward the intrinsic side. Again, those are the ones that tend to be related to things like your personal values and your identity. And we've talked about identity before, by the way, <laughs> on this podcast, and we've talked about like an athlete identity and why that can be really, really important in terms of sticking to your fitness habits, your, your training, your nutrition, and all of those sorts of things. So some examples of these types of motivators, let's say you start a nutrition plan to change your body because you want to please other people, whether it's your peers, your family members, or others on social media. So that's a little bit more appearance-based, which can be more extrinsic or external. Let's say a friend talks you into doing a really hard fitness challenge, and you reluctantly agree because you don't want to disappoint them, but you really don't have a lot of interest in doing this for your own reasons. So again, it's sort of like a little bit more outside yourself. Um, another example, very commonly, your doctor tells you to start exercising. This happens to a lot of people, right? You go to get a checkup and your physician says, okay, you need to include more exercise in your life. So maybe over time you find ways to connect to that on a deeper level, but at first it's motivated because you were told that you have to do this. Let's say your gym has a challenge for a month and the prize is free workout clothes for a year. You are very motivated to complete all the workouts and you show up to the gym five times a week. You're like, fuck yeah, I'm winning the, these free gym clothes for a year. But let's say at the end, you're not the winner. And once the challenge is over, you don't feel really like getting to the gym like you were before. So that's an example of being really motivated by a reward. And in what case, like it helped you in the short term to get in there and participate, 
but there was kind of a, a missing opportunity to go a little bit deeper and identify with things that were more pleasing about that exercise plan or that challenge that then you can roll forward. This happens a lot. Your company is hosting corporate wellness competition and whoever loses the most weight wins a cash prize. I'm not even going to get into the reasons why this is problematic, but I bring it up because this happens a lot to those of you out in the world who work in corporate settings where there's some kind of corporate wellness initiative and like they set up a very extrinsically motivated type of prize or reward for being, I don't know, the winner who like loses the most inches, logs the most days, loses the most weight. Again, I'm not saying that I would support this and this is a, a good idea and in my opinion has more downsides than it's worth to frame a competition in that way. <laughs> I've talked many times over the past 10 years about why that's not a great idea. But in any case, it does happen quite a bit. Let's say you have a goal to get the number one strain score in your whoop group. Let's say you have a whoop and you're in this whoop group, which there are whoop groups out there. Um, whoop is a <laughs> recovery tracker, by the way, but there are a lot of people who compete to get number one strain in their group. And again, that's sort of like an extrinsic motivator, right? To be the winner, to get your name at the top of the whiteboard, to like be the, the top person in your fitness group. Like that's a very common thing, right? Strava. I mean, if you've ever been on Strava or Garmin or some of these other fitness uh, trackers, you can see like there are competitions within that. And again, not saying those are a bad thing. Those can be fun. They can really get people going, but the key is what do you identify with also intrinsically to keep you going to the long term? Another example, and I kind of mentioned this one earlier, you start a meal plan and home workouts because you want to impress your classmates when you go to your 25th high school reunion, right? So again, motivated more by like your appearance to other people. So those are just a few examples of how extrinsic motivators can show up in fitness in nutrition and health overall. So again, we just want to recap that extrinsic motivators aren't inherently bad. They're often present when people start things like a fitness program or nutrition coaching. But, and here, if you listen to nothing else in this episode, I want you to hear this really clearly. Shifting toward motivators that are more intrinsically linked will help you see your behaviors through for the long haul. Very, very important for long-term adherence or long-term consistency, depending on what term you like better. Very important that you connect to something deeper than only the extrinsic or external reasons. All right. So that was that part of, of the podcast. And then lastly, let's go over some things that you can do. So some action steps, some tips, some takeaways. What are some things that you can do to establish a sense of more intrinsic motivation with regard to things like your training plans, your fueling strategies, and so on and so forth. So number one, I know this sounds like probably simple, but consider your intrinsic motivations for fitness, for nutrition, for health behaviors overall. Sometimes, again, if you're really extrinsically driven, you may not have sat down and thought about this for a while or maybe ever. And when students come into Strength Nutrition Unlocked, in the mindset section, before you start any coursework, we have a whole orientation module. And within the orientation module, we have a couple of different mindset lessons to really get you started and get you thinking about things like this. And one of the things that we assess are your motivations for being there. Like, have you stopped to think about what really drives you? And it's to help you just sit down and ask those questions and get clearer and to say also, like, where is there an opportunity for growth here? And to really challenge that growth mindset. Maybe you've had a really extrinsically driven set of reasons. And as somebody who loves the idea of competition <laughs> and loves to push myself over time, right? It, that's not enough. It's not enough to keep you going, especially if you don't come out on top. I've really had to over my athletic um you know, pursuits to really think about what are the things that drive me? What are the things I really love about fitness besides just winning, winning competitions or winning, you know, the top in your workout or whatever it is, like what else is there? So again, it's not to say that extrinsic things are bad. 
it's just to say, where can I nudge myself to grow? Okay. Number two, see if there's room to shift your extrinsic motivators to something further along that spectrum. So again, nobody's saying you have to ditch the things that extrinsically drive you. If you find that they are really, truly motivating. However, see if there is a way for you to connect to something that's a bit more along the lines of your values, your identity, and that ekes you toward an intrinsic reason. So you don't have to switch everything overnight, but see if you can nudge it a little bit. And again, that's kind of related to the idea of growth mindset. And number three, give yourself some choice. Give yourself some choice when it comes to your fitness, your nutrition, the things that you're working on. And if we go back to the beginning of the episode, we talked about things like where did intrinsic and extrinsic motivation come from? That's self-determination theory in the three pillars of self-determination theory. The first one being autonomy and the sense that you have some choice, right? The second one was competence and the third one was relatedness. So this is one of the reasons why when I work with clients specifically, I'm, I'm in there and we're talking about what choices do you have here? It's a, it's a lot about that. It's not just prescribing. I know people think, oh, I'm going to go work with a coach. They're just going to tell me what to do. Well, guess what? When that's the case, you have very little sense of like your own choice in the matter. So it's less likely that you're going to keep sticking with that stuff long-term if you feel like you have no choice. I know it sounds tempting, like, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. And certainly a good coach is also there to put on that hat sometimes to like lay out the information. However, your choice in the matter is extremely important. So when it comes to longer term participation in fitness and nutrition, make sure that you have some choice in the matter, or you're at least considering some flexibility in what you're doing for yourself. All right, let's take a sec and recap this episode. First, we defined what are intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and where these concepts come from in psychology. We also took a look at what are some of the misconceptions or misunderstandings that people often have of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. We followed it up with some examples of how extrinsic motivation shows up in fitness and nutrition. And lastly, we covered three tips for shifting from extrinsic motivation toward something more intrinsically motivated and why that's important for long-term success and your goals. All right. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on your podcast app and over on YouTube, hit subscribe and also ring the bell for more notifications, especially if you liked this episode and you want to see more content like this and my other fitness and nutrition content for folks over 40. So go check that out. And also if you're ready to apply for strength nutrition unlocked, because you want expert help and guidance, you want a clear strategy and a roadmap to follow, to improve your fitness, your strength, build muscle and your performance inside and out of the gym, then go ahead and visit us over at stephgaudro.com slash apply to fill out your application and begin the process. All right. Thank you so much for being with me today. I really appreciate it. And until next time, stay strong.